Coach Green, and today we're going to talk more about the snatch. Alright, if you've been following these videos for any length of time, you've noticed that I like naming and defining whatever it is we're trying to improve on. That's what I feel is a great starting point for improvement and getting to the destination you're trying to go to. So, for the Olympic weightlifting, we're going to talk about naming. A lot of times the names are butchered, whether it be the clean, which is most common, or the snatch. The jerk, not too often, but the clean and the snatch... Again, we're focused on the snatch for this second video still. So, if you look at the traditional lift, we have the snatch, the clean, and the jerk. In competition, the clean and jerk go together, but for this purpose of athletic performance, of field and court sports, the snatch and the clean will keep separate, or excuse me, the clean and the jerk will keep separate. So, these are the traditional lifts, the snatch, the clean, and the jerk. The snatch, again, Wide grip starting from the floor. The bar goes in one smooth movement all the way up over the head, received overhead in a fully squatted position, and then you stand it up from there with arms locked out. The clean starting from the floor, closer grip from the floor, pulling the bar up, receiving it on the shoulders in a fully squatted position, and then standing up. For our finished position, Normally, it's either the traditional lift, which is the snatch or clean in this case, or power, right? If we have a power snatch or power clean, the bar is going to be received with your legs at or above parallel. At or above parallel being your knee and your hip are on the same level, parallel or above to the floor. That is the power position. That is power snatch, power clean. Finish position for either of those. Starting position, again, we have the traditional starting position of a snatch or clean from the floor. Other variables or variants in the starting position is hang, above the knee, below the knee, which are both similar to the hang, or from blocks. If the bar is starting from a hang, that means you have full control over the bar. It's not sitting on thing, not sitting on the floor or any elevated surface like it would be for blocks you have complete control over it. That is the hang. So hang snatch, you're holding onto the bar yourself. You lower into your RDO hip hinge, into the snatch movement. Again, if it's a hang snatch, you're receiving the bar traditionally. If it's a hang power snatch, you're finishing in the power position. Those are the differences. So when we see people that are maxing out on power cleans, but they're receiving the bar in a full squat that is not a power clean, that is a clean or snatch, whatever it may be. Again, these things matter when we're naming things, so there's consistency in our performance, in our testing, in our transferability to higher levels, right? This isn't all, obviously it's mostly 98% about transferring it to your sport, but it's also about being able to transfer it from one location to another okay if you come into my facility and we're doing hang power cleans we're gonna do hang power cleans if you go into your school and they have hang clean on the board they're expecting you to do a hang power clean but the actuality is they're telling you to do a hang clean right so knowing the difference between the names is very important as far as accuracy transferability consistency goes get it right another main point of emphasis is the three pulls of the olympic lifts and these unless you've taken the usaw certification course or just studied the olympic lifts themselves you probably don't really have an idea of what it is a lot of times you just see people lifting the bar off of the ground as fast as they can and kind of praying and hoping that they can receive the bar in the correct position so to go over this very briefly, the first pull is a pull that we see from the floor to right above the knee position. This pull isn't and shouldn't be extremely fast. It should be a good tempo to get the bar moving off of the floor. 
making sure you're pushing with the legs down as hard as you can, right? Even though it is technically a pull. So we have primarily knee extension from that position. So again, your torso angle, once you get set up, shouldn't change during the first pull. When we get into the second pull, that's when we see the torso angle change because we're going from primarily knee extension to finishing knee extension into a powerful hip extension as well as ankle plantar flexion or foot plantar flexion. This is what people traditionally call triple extension, right? So we have the knee, hip, and ankle joint, not necessarily in that order, but well, yeah, in this order, not necessarily from the bottom up, but finishing the knee, getting into powerful hip extension, then ankle plantar flexion. So we have two things that are pushing the bar up, being the ankles and knees. The hips are creating the velocity and speed component of our force or power rather and then into our third pull this is the pull a lot of people either don't do or do it incorrectly or too soon rather so the third pull this is really other than holding on to the bar and maintaining a proper posture through your torso this is really the only time your arms are actually doing something so the third pull is when you're ripping yourself, whether it be for the snatch or the clean, you're ripping yourself with your arms under the barbell. A lot of times people think they're just kind of dropping under the barbell and catching it. That is not wrong, but it's not effective or efficient, right? So we wanna drive the bar up with the legs and we wanna pull our body underneath with our arms and so what that does other than timing it really engages our upper body so when we get into a receiving position the bar is not crashing down on us and we're not kind of loosey-goosey through our shoulders so when we pull ourselves under the bar if we're doing a snatch for example when we pull ourselves under the bar we're engaging even further or activating not activating but we're engaging our deltoids our upper back muscles traps all of those things by pulling ourselves underneath then we flip, punch the arms, we're already there. As opposed to getting the bar up, we have a grip on it, but we aren't really prepared or using our upper body muscles to get ourselves down, to use our full body for the movement. So we're getting fully extended with the legs and we kind of drop underneath it, flip the arms up, and then we have to either brace really fast or kind of just, again, hope and pray. So the third pull is overlooked and possibly the most important out of the three, right? Obviously, we all know this is the second pull, our triple extension, that's what we're ideally focused on is a triple extension, producing as much force in the shortest amount of in the shortest amount of time possible. But if we're not starting correctly and we're not finishing correctly, the stuff in the middle isn't as beneficial as we'd like it to be. Now we'll work on getting into a good starting position. With the snatch, because of our wider hand position, our hip height is gonna be slightly higher relative to the clean. To get into a good starting position, we'll start with our normal wide snatch grip and our feet hip width apart standing up. From here, all we're gonna do, we're gonna go into an RDL, pushing the hips straight back. When the bar gets below the knees, the knees will bend and take the bar the rest of the way down to the floor. This generally will put us in our snatch starting position. Now that we know how to get down into a good starting position, we know how to get up into a good finishing position. All we have to do is the inverse of how we got down. So we push with the legs, starting at the knees so our torso position doesn't change. And once we get above the knees, we come through with the hips. Two of the most common mistakes that we can trace most of the errors in Olympic lifting back to are starting with the hips too high, where we push through the floor, but because our hips are set so far backwards, 
the bar is sent up and back over our head as opposed to up and directly on top of the shoulders. The second mistake is starting with the hips too low. From this position, when we push down through the floor, get above the knees, the hips are not able to produce enough horizontal force to get the bar going up and back to land on top of the shoulder. Thank <laughs> you. 